But we will start with the breaking news of the day. Yesterday, National Signing Day. A lot of guys in the portal, people moving around, Tigers scrambling, and they get some good news today. Miles Brennan, the quarterback that was the starter for last year until he got hurt and was going to be in the mix this year to start until he got hurt, is going to return to LSU and exit the portal, come back for his sixth year in Baton Rouge, which is great news for this program, great news for Brian Kelly, great news for the quarterback room, and certainly you got to feel great for Miles Brennan, who will have a chance to finish on his terms as opposed to the terms of somebody's doctor. I was thrilled when I saw the news today. I was pumped, man. We we got some other news <laughs> earlier that we'll talk about later, but yeah. this definitely soothed my sorrows with that, uh, especially with our quarterback room, just looking at it, especially going into next year, really only two quarterback, two scholarship quarterbacks on the roster. That's a shaky start to, to start a season and having that dynamic to deal with. But I, I think getting Miles back, it, it, definitely, it definitely is a great move by Coach Kelly and the crew. Um, recruiting him and getting him back to be a Tiger. I mean, he's been a Tiger his whole life, doing things the right way. Obviously, he's been ravaged with injuries his entire career. Really never got a chance to really show uh, his full potential at the quarterback position. But I think going into next year, if he can stay healthy, he'll get a great opportunity to do that, kind of show Walker the ropes. Uh, we'll, we'll see what Garrett wants to do in the future. But I, I think this is a huge gift for Coach Kelly and the crew. It's been a wild ride for, for Miles Brennan. He comes in, Dan, uh, Danny Etling is a transfer and Danny Etling wins that job. Miles backs him up. They ask him to come in in some really tough spots. Troy asks him to come in in Tuscaloosa late in the game, but early in his career, not much there. And then, obviously, you think he's got a real chance as Danny moves on to be the starting quarterback. Joe Burrow comes in. He's the starting quarterback. He did okay. Uh, and Miles obviously got to sit back and watch Joe for two years. Then you think it's Miles' opportunity. Well, COVID hits, and it's a disaster. And then we try to play a football season – he throws the ball all over the yard for three weeks, throws for a ton of yards, a lot of touchdowns. A little shaky against Mississippi State, but against Vanderbilt, Missouri, I thought he was excellent. Then he gets hurt in that Missouri game, has to miss the remainder of that season. So he comes back. You got Max Johnson and TJ Finley into the program. You think the quarterback room is as healthy as it's been. You've got Miles Brennan as an upperclassman, Max Johnson, a young player, a freshman, TJ Finley, a young player, a freshman. You get a commitment from Garrett Nussmeyer. You really think he's going to be a really good player. And all of a sudden, in, or as we know, Miles breaks his arm in four, right before training camp starts, and Max Johnson takes over the reins. T.J. Finley leaves, goes to Auburn. Nussmeyer plays a little bit this year. Now Max decides he's going to leave. Quarterback room is kind of left in shambles. You got one guy left, and now he can't play in the goal game because he's trying to redshirt. Miles Brennan decides he's going to stay. LSU was going to have to add a quarterback from the transfer portal in addition to Walker Howard. This is your guy. Just... Didn't have to move. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to look far to find your guy, which is, I, I think you, it, it's so huge. You can't go, uh, it can't go unannounced. Uh, you, you can't go into a college football season. We saw how this team was ravaged with injuries. That's not out of the cards next year. You play a violent game. Obviously, Miles got hurt not in a non-football related injury, yep. but you still got to play on the field. You still got these defensive linemen coming after you, trying to get you on the ground. And you got to need as many scholarship quarterbacks as you can have, and especially talented scholarship quarterbacks, which I think all three of these kids have, have really a high ceiling, in my opinion. And so for Miles, I think just being the leadership, being going through everything that a college quarterback could go through, playing, starting, backing up, just – doing it all, I think that's going to be great for the younger quarterbacks on this roster to kind of show them the ropes and show them how things are supposed to be done the right way. So uh, I'm so excited for him. I, I think this is probably going to be his best opportunity to really show what he can be as a college starting quarterback and uh, what other than Coach Kelly and, and the rest of the staff he's going to put together to try to help him do that. Look, in three games last year against SEC teams, Miles Brennan completed 60% of his passes for 370 yards per game and 11 touchdowns in three games, which is almost four a game. Uh, he was playing really high-level football after really the first half against Mississippi State where he struggled a little bit to get his feet on the ground. Um, he's a veteran. He obviously understands what is called what what is asked of a college quarterback, and he's got a little bit of experience playing, certainly not a lot. He does not have a lot. It's his sixth year, and he hasn't played a ton. But he's certainly, to me, the best option out of the transfer portal. We talked about this last week, a little bit yesterday. I haven't watched Keaton Slovis play a down of football in his entire college career. I don't watch much USC. He was a nice, highly thought of recruit. He kind of split time this past year, got hurt. I, I haven't seen a ton of him. I have no interest in Zach Calzada. I have no interest in Emory Jones. 
Um, you know, but Bo, Bo, um, Bo Nix is a talented dude. Do I des- desperately need him to be the quarterback? No, and I don't desperately need Miles to be the quarterback. But he's the guy that I probably would have picked based on his his skill set, his age, experience level, and then kind of what I've seen from him. I think this is great from him. I don't know that he's going to beat out Garrett Nussme- Nussmeyer, but I know that uh, that he's got a lot of talent and has proven on the SEC stage that he can handle what what's asked of him. Yeah, I think for me, I think he's probably the most accurate passer out of that bunch that you just named, just watching Bill Nix all play last season, watching Zach Calzada play. Uh, I think Miles brings you the most accurate. I haven't seen much of Slovis either, but I heard he was probably the best of the bunch that's in the portal. And if you throw Miles into that bunch, but – uh, I love what Miles can bring to this thing. I think for me, the veteran leadership that he's going to be able to bring, just coming in that building every day, just knowing what's required and knowing what's acts of a college quarterback, uh, I think that's going to work dividends, especially with the younger guys that are on this roster. So I'm excited. I think the more intriguing question for me is uh, who's going to be 15 now? Is Miles going to keep that? We're going to give that to Walker? Like, how are they going to massage <laughs> that little thing going on there? Well, it's. I think they can make an arrangement there. Miles has got a couple more months left on campus, and as a graduate, and Walker is just showing up. So I think we'll figure something out. It's just there, and and I think you know, in terms of Walker, he's said, uh, and it's been been mentioned that he would be okay with a red shirt. So as disheveled as this quarterback room was, you know, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, when, um, well, I guess Max hadn't decided to transfer, but you were looking at coaching change. Walker's taking a visit to Notre Dame. Eventually, Max is going to transfer. Like it looked really, really shaky. All of a sudden, it's it's back on solid ground now because you've got a sixth-year senior in Miles. You've got Nussmeyer, who is essentially a freshman. I, I can't keep up with years anymore. But he's he's basically a freshman. He's going to redshirt, so he'll be a freshman again next year. Um, so you got him there, and then you bring in Walker Howard. All right, you got your feet on the ground. Do I think Walker Howard and Garrett Nussmeyer are both going to graduate from LSU and finish their playing days there? No, I do not. But as we talked about last week. When Miles entered the transfer portal, no one had done that since Jordan Jefferson at LSU. It appears that Miles will. So one part of this is that LSU's quarterback room is is on solid footing now. That's very, very good. Second part is, how can you not pull for Miles Brennan? Guy who has been, quote-unquote, beaten out or lost a job due to injury or you know, play by three, four different people, if you want to count Finley. And now he's finally going to get a chance to, to come back and compete one more time. And I don't know that Brian Kelly guaranteed him the starting job, but I do know that Max, I mean, that Miles was prepared to go somewhere else. And Brian Kelly spoke with him, and then after two days beyond that conversation, he determined that hey, it's time to time to come back. By the way, shout out to Shay Dixon for reporting this. I forgot to do it at the top. Shay Dixon did break this story on Twitter. Shout out to Shay for that. Go two four seven. Awesome work by them. But how can you not pull for Miles Brennan? Yeah, it's a it's a guy that, that like I say, when he did announce that he was transferred, it wasn't one of those like another guy we'll talk about later that transfer. Yep. I had nothing but good things to say about Miles. You can't possibly predict um just everything he's gone through as a college quarterback, the freaking Heisman winner coming into town and just lighting the league on fire. You can't predict any of those things, and he handled everything the right way. I can't really pull up anything of him complaining or no. or moping or just you know kind of being a bad apple in the group he's he's done things the right way and those are the type of guys you want to have in your locker room and having your program so for me I, I think it's it's going to be huge for him to come back and, and really show his pride for LSU, shoes pride for the tigers and and what an epic tweak that he got to post out the i think we've all seen wolf of washington that was, that was a great one so that, that was a, a great way to announce your uh your presence back in the LSU Nation. Yeah, and Stephen, and you mentioned that. Stephen Miller says, um, Miles broke the news, actually. Though. That's correct. I'm over there trying to write Throwback Thursday. It's all <laughs> p- popping up on my phone. And Shay was the first tweet I saw that would all spilled out. But Miles did tweet out the Wolf of Wall Street thing that he's not uh, <clears throat> leaving. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. that was that was very, very good for him. And, and Bilbo says in the Bayou Ford chat over there on YouTube, says, sadly, Hunt is right. This QB room won't stay together four years from now. That day's over. So mm. don't all you can do is make it as healthy as you can in the moment. Right now, LSU's in a good spot. And then you continue to recruit, and you continue to develop guys, you continue to play. Some guys are going to leave. That's just the nature of it. But that's 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 everywhere. So, and everyone knows that now. There's no reason to even say it. But it's not sad that it's going to fall apart. What's good is that it's stable right now. And that's the only thing that you can you can certainly hope. So that's the, uh, the news of the day as LSU kind of looks towards the future. I will add this. Uh, Miles is not going to play in the ballgame. Uh, that is not going to happen. Uh, I think there was some indication that, oh, maybe he, he, he can be the guy. Right now, it looks like LSU is going to start a walk-on or a wide receiver in that game. I, that's the best I can do. Maybe Nuss gets a waiver, the NCAA. Who knows what they're going to do. But the indication right now, Miles is not going to play in that game. I don't think Nussmeier is going to play in that game. It's the Texas Bowl against Kansas State. 
It is what it is. You just you're gonna throw somebody out there and see what you can do. I think that you're looking at a situation here where LSU's team that played in the final game against Texas A&M is going to look a lot different than the team that you saw playing in the game. Play that you will see playing in the game against Kansas State. You're gonna see some guys who are not playing in that game moving forward. That's gonna come out. I honestly 100% will tell you I don't know who, but you're gonna have some guys grades, suspensions, opt outs, <laughs> transfers. Like that team that plays in a few weeks. Is not going to be a team that played against Texas A&M. Yeah, this I, is what it is. Yeah, I think we'll find all that stuff, especially when they start practicing. We'll see who's actually going out to practice, who's actually got to play in this bowl game. But for me, I think there's going to be guys declaring for the draft. You can't leave that out. I think there'll be a couple guys that do that. There's going to be a couple guys opt out. Um, it's going to be a, a long list, I think. And it, it's going to be. I'm really. I'm curious to see what actual number of scholarship guys that we're going to actually walk into <laughs> NRG Stadium and actually have to be available to play in that game. It's it's scary, but I think it's still all setting up for next year. I think that's where you load up the guns for. I think that's why you get a Miles Brennan to come back. You, you're you putting your focus on next year, and the coaching staff, that's going to come. We don't even have offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator for next year. So I think that's all that we're gearing up for. It is, like you said, the Texas Bowl against Kansas State. <laughs> just probably not going to draw a lot of eyes. So I, I think you just got to start preparing for next year and trying to get the guys and players that you know are going to be here and start getting them better. Greg Lehman says in the Bay 4 chat, I wonder if this pushed Nuss to play in the bowl game. I just don't think you win the job over three and a half hours in the Texas Bowl against Kansas State. And you don't give up an entire year of your college eligibility for those three hours. There's nothing that Garrett Nussmeyer could do in that game. He cannot go out there and throw for 405 and six touchdowns and win the job. It's just, he didn't have an offensive coordinator. They're not running the same system. You don't have the same cast of characters around you. It's Kansas State. I mean, it's just that. You just can't win the job doing that. And I understand the sentiment of, well, maybe you can you know, put some stuff. That's not – they got a whole spring ball, a whole summer workouts, a whole fall camp, sprint scrimmages, the whole lot. You can't you can't win it in the Texas Bowl with a different staff. Just not the uh, the case. And then you answered the question there. Um, <laughs> John Del- uh, DeLone says, what's the walk-on's name? Matt O'Dowd. You just may <laughs> see him in yeah. the Texas Bowl. So the big news of the day, Miles Brennan – Pulling his name out of the transfer portal, he will remain at LSU and will be right squarely in the mix to be the starting quarterback for Brian Kelly's first team that takes the field against Florida State. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.